Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Apple Fritter Pancakes. That's right, we're making pancakes that taste like apple fritter style donuts. Which, by the way, is not the same thing as making an apple fritter in the shape of a pancake. Right, that would just be a poorly made apple fritter. Okay, what we want here is the same taste, but in the form of a very light, very fluffy, perfectly made pancake. And you know what? I think we did it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with this very, very simple batter, which begins with one large whole egg, to which we will add a little touch of white sugar, followed by some classic apple fritter donut spices, including cinnamon, of course, as well as some ground ginger, plus some freshly grated nutmeg that I freshly grated ahead of time. And then we're also going to need a little pinch of salt, as well as a little touch of vanilla extract. And please use the pure and the real. And that's it. Once all that's in there, we will take a whisk and we will start mixing and we will keep mixing until we stop mixing. And don't worry, you'll know when that should be. And that's it. Once that's been completed, we'll move on to the star of the show. One large, beautiful sweet apple, which we will grate in using the large holes of our cheese grater. And yes, I am grating in the skin, which is fine and works great, but we don't want to grate in the seeds. So as you get in close to that core, be careful. And one of the keys here is to be using a sharp grater. Okay, if your blades are sharp, you're going to get beautiful shreds that have the peel with apple attached. But if you used a dull grater or one that's too small, basically all you're going to get is apple skins and a lot of juice. And you'll still be able to make a batter, but I don't think it's going to be as good. And in case you're keeping score at home, I'm using a Honeycrisp, which is not a typical cooking apple like a Granny Smith. But for these pancakes, I do prefer a nice sweet eating apple like the Honeycrisp, or maybe a Fuji. But having said that, you use any apple you want. I mean, you guys are after all the jakes of your apple fritter pancakes. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and toss in a little bit of fresh lemon juice, which we'll do for a little bit of flavor, but also so our shredded apple doesn't start turning brown from oxidation. And then what we'll do once all that's been mixed together is that we'll finish this up with our dry ingredients, which will be some all-purpose flour, some baking powder, and a little bit of its good friend and drinking buddy, baking soda. And that's it. We will simply take our spatula and mix this until that flour disappears. And we formed a thick, but still very spoonable batter. And I know we are supposed to mix those three dry ingredients together first, but for something like this, it's really not going to matter unless you're very bad at stirring. And the next person I meet that's bad at stirring will be the first. But anyway, we'll go ahead and mix that up until we end up with something that looks like this. At which point we can head to the stove where we're going to cook these over medium heat and a few tablespoons of melted butter. And this one apple recipe is going to make two portions of two pancakes each. But obviously you can scale this yield up as big as you want. And yes, I did say medium heat since we don't want the surface to cook too fast and get too browned before the batter and those shreds of raw apple have time to cook in the center. And if these things do seem to be browning too fast, simply turn your heat down a little bit. All right, that is just you cooking. And you should never be afraid to make little adjustments like that along the way. And once we have our pancakes portioned out, we will let those cook for about three minutes per side. Although that's really just a guess. All right, that's all you get around here. You have to figure out the exact time they're done. But one way you can kind of tell you're getting close is if the pancake springs back to the touch. All right, if it feels kind of mushy and holds a finger mark, it's probably not cooked inside. And we'll want to give that another minute or two. Oh, and it probably does nothing. But after I flip pancakes, sometimes I'll give them a little turn like this so that the part of the surface of the pancake that was in the middle of the pan is now on the outside of the pan, which might help these cook more evenly, although I certainly can't prove it and really don't have the time or resources to try. But anyway, like I said, we'll give those about three minutes per side until our pancakes are springing back to the touch. And the other side is nicely browned as well. And that's it. Once those are done, we'll go ahead and pull them off the heat and serve those up hopefully next to some beautiful breakfast meat with a nice breakfast sausage being my preferred pairing. And then I went ahead and finished mine up with some warm maple syrup, which I think works on all pancakes, but especially ones that taste like apple fritter donuts. And that's it. I grabbed a fork and dug in to what was a truly outstanding pancake. Right, that, my friends, really does taste like an apple fritter donut. 
but the texture is completely different. All right, an apple fritter donut is heavy and dense with a much higher fat content, whereas these are very, very light and airy and delicate and not nearly as rich and heavy. Although that doesn't mean these aren't comforting and satisfying and filling, right? They really are, which if I'm being honest is a little bit surprising since these don't have any butter or oil in the batter and about half the volume of the batter was actually grated fresh apple, which makes these fairly nutritious and relatively healthy, which makes how incredible these are even more shocking. Oh, and even though I love these with maple syrup, if you did want to go with pure apple goodness, you could reduce some apple cider down till it gets a little bit syrupy and use that to top these with. And I think that would also be very nice. And I'm not exactly sure how, but all that apple skin really does disappear into the pancake. Right, if we're looking at the cross section, it kind of looks like a regular pancake. And they really do have an almost identical texture to a regular pancake. So if you're a little hesitant about adding those skins in, don't be. And they really do add a lot of beneficial fiber and don't even get me started on the vitamins and minerals. But anyway, that's it, what we're calling apple fritter pancakes. If you love apple fritter style donuts, but also want an easy to make, relatively healthy and nutritious pancake, then I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.